by inviting Mr. D.K. Agarwal to commence his presentation. Thank you. Yeah. So, very good morning. I think today we are gathering in the early morning. So, I'm sure you are fresh with the breakfast. Uh, the first slide talks about the polyester value chain. Where it is in the Rama? As you can see, we are a consumer staple company. We serve the consumer products. Uh, we are not affected by the recessionary conditions you saw in 2008. And also you will see in the following slides that Europe and United States, how our performance is there. So the PTA is upstream integration strategy. As you can see the PTA and MEG, the new plant for MEG, which is acquired by us in United States, is the... So the new uh, strategy is the upstream integration, the Parazilin, which is also as one of the projects which we are looking at it. Upstream integration into Parazilin will capture the whole value chain. The whole objective of IVL is now to capture more value chain from right from naphtha to end product. We control the end product, so we want to capture as much value chain as possible. And that is the strategy. When you control the end product, you control the market. So what is the intention is now is to capture more value chain. What is the global claims driving demand for polyester? Urbanization. More urbanization as in China you have seen how much urbanization is happening which is driving the end product demand in terms of beverages and food. Sustainability. The world is talking about sustainability in the recycling, quality of life, productivity and innovation. So these global trends are driving the demand for polyester, rapidly growing at 6.7% per annum, as you will see in the following slides. The next slide talks about the growth. In 2011, you can see the 62 million is the total demand. This gives you the rest of the world is 12 million, Asia is 31 million, Europe is 9 million, North America is 9 million. So 62 million in 2011 which is a growth of 6.9%. It's projected to grow by 7.3% as you can see from 2011 to 2015. The projected demand is expected to grow to 82 billion. So we are in a business which is rapidly growing, the consumer products. Uh, as you can see in a recessionary situation, if the discretionary expenditure which goes away. Discretionary expenditure means you don't spend on the cars, the construction department gets hit, but not the consumer products. Now these are by the consultants that the industry will continue to grow rapidly at 7.3% per annum. If we look at the demand growth by segment, where you can see the PET, uh, IVL's major product line is PET. Right now we are in 19 million in 2011, projected to grow to 26 million, a growth of 8.4%. The fiber, I think we have a pretty new number of times that polyester is the fastest growing fiber because cotton, there is a limited growth in cotton and that's why it goes from 40 to 52 million uh, tons from 2011 to 2015. It is growing as a multiple of GDP. Uh, as the world goes 2.5 to 3 percent, the growth is 6.7 to 7 percent, so it's two times the GDP growth. Similarly, film, the polyester film is expected to grow from 3 to 4. So the CAGR from 11 to 15 is projected to 7.3% in the demand. So we are in an industry which is rapidly growing. We have a substantial market share in the downstream uh, market. Uh, this is the first time we are giving you this slide to give you a feel. Uh, you know, China does have a big influence in our business. And there is always a restocking and restocking, which is related to the prices. Uh, Chinese sometimes go away from the market. So you can see the fluctuation in the demand. But at the end, and the prices, when the prices are high, they sometimes go away, step away from the market. So you can see the 3.2 million tons per annum was 2010 to 11, which is 6% growth. So you do see a cyclical fluctuation, and that's why you see the inventory gain loss in our uh, quarterly statements and we do give you a core EBITDA explaining, uh, eliminating those uh, uh, inventory gain losses. So what you are seeing here, the fourth quarter there was a so 
the prices drop, and then we expect again restocking taking place in the second half when the margins will go up. The bottom line is that the underlying demand is robust in the polyester chain. Uh, you do see fluctuations quarter to quarter. Uh, that's because of restocking and restocking. So we have kept few slides this time in the industry section because I think uh, instead of repeating it, uh, IBM is in a business which is rapidly growing. Uh, the demand growth is there. Uh, it is resilient. Uh, we have seen in Europe, people might be having worry about Europe, but uh, you will see our all European plants are operating at 100% capacity. Our Rotterdam plant is going to be started in end June, uh, which is going to be a replacement of the import demand. The Europe is still imports about 750,000 tons of PET. So this gives you a feel of what's happening in the industry. Of course, we'll take your question answers later if you have any further questions. Uh, you go to the second section, company overview. So what is Indoor IBM? We are a polyester chain industry leader, uh, as we have demonstrated by various acquisition and various greenfield plants. We have a committed capacity of 8.6 million tons by 2013. A very good example of acquisitions, culturally integrating them and managing those operations. Today we operate 29 operating sites in 15 countries across four continents. All our acquisitions have been very successfully integrated. Uh, I was in uh, US recently. The Old World acquisition has been very well integrated and we'll talk about Old World when we go to that section of uh, new acquisition. We are providing value-added and differentiated products and services to our customer across the globe. We have a substantial market share, as you know. Uh, the PT is about 20 million tons. We control about 17% of the world market and the leading position in Europe and the United States. We have an integrated portfolio designed for growth. As you can see, we went into uh, EG, which is a new chapter for IBL. As you might be Shell Gas is very, very competitive in the US. The ethylene in the United States today for crackers, new crackers, is going to cost only 20 cents a pound, $440, versus the present Northeast Asia price of $1,200. So this acquisition of IBL is giving you a new chapter for IBL, a new foothold, and we'll talk this more when we go to that section. Benchmark in operational excellence, we continuously benchmark ourselves. We have the best operational excellence around the group. We continuously exchange the knowledge from one unit to another unit, and exceptional management with human track record, and we remain committed for growing the shareholders' value which we have demonstrated. If you go to the next slide, uh, we serve the end customer. Look at the customer profile. We feel when we have such a substantial market share, we deal directly with the end customer like Coke, Pepsi, Nestle, Danone, Kraft Foods. We are able to give them a global solution. Like Danone in Paris can buy our product anywhere in the world. Similarly, Nestle, Coca Cola. Similarly, on the specialty side or the uh, hygiene fiber side, when the fiber needs an acquisition, like Procter Gamble, let me give you an example of Procter Gamble. We serve Procter Gamble from all the business segments. We give them bottles, which are made from PET. We give them ethoxylates, which is made from ethylene oxide from the recent acquisition of uh, Old World. And we are giving them for the diapers and fun care. So, this is the end product solution to different customers. So, all these are the customers who may be thinking what is the intercontinental and where you're doing here. We are able to provide them with a trivial acquisition a solution for their furnishing, for frame retardant furnishing solution. So, we, have, we are serving the world class customers globally, and we are strongly poised right now because of our volume and the footprint around the globe. This gives you strong uh, operating performance, production volumes, uh, history from 2006. We have a CAGR of 66%. In 2011, our total production was 4.36 million tons. Of course, uh, North America and Europe, uh, and 2.1 million is in Asia. Last 12 months, our total production is 4.6 million tons. If you look at uh, segment-wise, the same numbers, you can see the PET is a significant portion. Uh, last 12 months was 2.47 million tons, which is going to grow further 
as what Chinese 